Hey fellow minions of technology, my name is Tim Lee. Welcome to Legacy Studio. In today's video, I want to talk a little bit more about Touch Portal. Touch Portal is an amazing program that you can get for super cheap. And let me tell you, uh, one-time payment, and I think it's like only like 12, 13 bucks right now. Uh, and you can have an old iPad, an old tablet. Um, you can put Touch Portal on there and use it like you would a Stream Deck. Now, I would say that Touch Portal is easily covering just as much ground as, stream, as Steam Deck does, uh, or passes it, Stream Deck does, or passes it, and um, because just there's so many wonderful features that they've done. And they've just released a new update, and with that new update comes a couple things that I need to change in my system uh, that I think I can share with you. So let me put this in context really quickly. The context is... Um, I have switched from Streamlabs OBS to OBS Studio because I was getting the blue screen of death uh, while I was shooting with Streamlabs OBS. Not sure why and just figured it would just be the simplest thing to go back to vanilla and now that I'm in, uh, Streamlab uh, in OBS Studio I actually really like it. So I've been sticking with it and been more than happy with it. Uh, now in saying that, in the latest update of the Touch Portal, they've made a whole bunch of amazing changes and the thing that excites me is it made some changes to some things that I suggested in my video. So it makes me kind of think that they were actually listening to my video and they actually took that into effect. So yes, just saying, a little excited about that. Little tiny channel, but people have been listening and that's pretty cool. So what I want to do is I want to show you how to set up a touch portal with your OBS Studio, if you're using OBS Studio. Uh, with Streamlabs, there's just an auto connect button, but with um, with the studio system, you have to go through IP address and link a couple things up. Uh, so I want to show you how that's done. I have the tablet that I'm using right here. It's an old Samsung Galaxy 10.1. Uh, if you have an old tablet, just give it a shot. You may find that that tablet will work for your needs. Um, and let me tell you, I don't use this for anything else except for Touch Portal. And I love it for that purpose. So these are all the different websites that I use every single day since I've been here in quarantine at home and making my broadcasts for my radio station. And you can just, you have all these great settings, including one of the new features that I love as they automatically have a go to main page on each new page that you make as, as long as you tick it in their settings, which is super awesome. And even something as simple as turning up and down my volume on my computer using this is a really nifty feature. So I don't have to hold down any function buttons on a keyboard or anything like that. It's all right there in that simple moment in time. I still love this thing. It's a great system. Now I want to set it up with OBS Studio. I made a page with OBS Studio and there's a button that I noticed that you can program that says connect to OBS. So I put that in there, tried going into OBS, tried to connect and nothing would happen. And I was going, why isn't anything happening? Well, now that I've installed something, suddenly magic is happening and I want to share what that magic is that is suddenly working. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop onto my main screen here so you can see everything here. Let me go ahead and move my OBS Studio out of the way. <laughs> That's not trippy at all. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way over here uh, onto another screen so you guys don't have to worry about that. Here's what you need to install and it's a fairly simple install as long as you make sure to put everything in the same folder. Um, it, it, when you first install uh, Streamlabs OBS, OBS Studio, any of those, install it on your C drive, even if you're using a solid state drive, because 90% of the plugins and effects that you can use in there uh, need to find that same folder, and, if, and, and a lot of them are pre-programmed to look for it in the key area. So it would make the most sense just to do that. What you need to do is you need to look up OBS WebSocket, and you can see I looked it up there in the past. From there you go to the, OB, the obsproject.com, you click on OBS WebSocket, and then there's a link over here that says go to download. Now when you're in here, then it'll show you this area here and if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the areas to download. I grabbed this one here, the OBS WebSocket 4.7 Windows Installer. Now you might be using a Mac or something like that too, but I used the Windows Installer and I installed it. Important note, I was recording a video talking about this just a few minutes ago because I was literally going to install it with you guys on camera, but I was using OBS at that moment. Strong advice, do not install this packet, do not install this installer when OBS is running. <laughs> because I literally had a blue screen of death and I lost everything. Turn off OBS, 
do the install, super quick, super easy, and it's going to come to a point in time, if you already have OBS Studio installed, it's gonna say, hey, we found the OBS folder. Are you sure you want to install this into that folder? Click on yes. Once you do that, then you can uh, boot up your Streamlabs OBS here. And then, let me go ahead and pull Streamlabs back in here, and I know it's gonna be a bit trippy for a minute here. So we're back in here with me and my millions. My millions of minions, hey, I like that. And uh, what we can do now is when we click on connect to OBS, in the bottom right corner here, I don't know if you can see that underneath my video, let me lift this up here. You can see it says new socket connection, and it shows that socket connection uh, hooked, up, hooked up there. Now, in saying that, now apparently OBS is connected to this, the uh, touch portal. So let's find out. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way again. Actually, I'm going to keep this on the same page just so we can see both here. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the Touch Portal app. All right, so we got both of these open, OBS and the Touch Portal. So let's see how easily now they link up together as we start messing with stuff. I'm going to go into my Pages area here, and I'm going to select OBS Studio. That's a page that I've already made. If you don't know how to do this, there the, I made a video, and I'm going to link it in this video somewhere. Click it and watch it. Um, I'm, I'm very detailed in showing how to set up Touch Portal um, in your computer and hook it up and get everything up and running. Uh, now, in saying that it is an older version, we might need to do an upgraded version of this, which technically this could be that, but I'm not going to go into full detail on how to set up pages and things like that. We'll maybe work on a future video. This I want to key in on specifically how to set this up with OBS, and specifically OBS Studio. So let's go back into here, and what we're going to do now is we're going to see if this connected as smoothly as we hope it will. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new button, and we're going to go ahead and on this new button area here. Let me go ahead and scroll down here to OBS. And we're going to say uh, set scene collection, set scene. All right, so OBS scene. Now, right here, I see this little thing here, and I'm not sure what that is. So you have not selected a scene. OK, so no action will be triggered. Here we go. And this is great news. Now, last time I did this, none of this showed up. So because it connected through that web socket, now things will start to behave. So we'll go ahead and say scene two. We'll go ahead and name it. Let's call this main cam. Oh, and by the way, the thing I absolutely love about this program now that was not in here before is if you typed anything into this text, uh, it would not, it would just go off the sides of the button. They've made it now so that it goes in word wrap with the button, which I absolutely love. So if I wanted to, I could say Tim's main camera, and you see how it jumped down like that? didn't used to do that. So they, they I, I hope they got that from my video because I made that in a suggestion in my video and that's it by itself an awesome update. I'm happy about that. It's small, it's simple, but it's excellent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set a color. And here's an important thing to note. This had me kind of running around a little bit. You see how this says transparent background turned on? If you want the button to show up, you have to turn this off. I was wondering why on earth this wasn't working right. If it was me, and I was to make another suggestion to them, I would not have this pre-checked. I would turn this off. So if I turn that off, now I have a button. And then if I want it transparent, then I can turn it on. And something that would be really cool that I don't see here, which would be a neat feature, is to have a slider here for what percentage of transparency it has. Because they've made this now so you can put background images on this, which is super cool. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save to this now. And now Tim's camera main is set on there. Now, I also did see some little slip-ups here that I'm noticing. If you look in this function here, these are rounded edges on this button in the display here. But if you look on my uh, system here, those are square. So there's still a little bit of a disconnect, a couple bugs to work out, so it seems. Let's go ahead and set up another one here. Uh, you scroll on down here to OBS. We're going to set a scene again. Uh, there we go. And we're going to call this one, let's see, this one is Cam 4K. So this is the one that I'm on right now. So this utilizes both my cameras and the 4K screen that we're literally sitting in right now. We're going to go, on, go ahead and call this 4K screen and both cams. Okay, good. Uh, let's go ahead and set up a color for this. We're going to do this one in orange and in yellow just because I can. I'm going to turn off the transparent background so that does that. And we'll go ahead and hit, uh, see rounded corners is clicked here. It's added those rounded corners. Let's see what happens once we hit save. There's square corners here on this screen. They're not over there. So interesting. I don't know if that'll change. If that's an update that needs to do, let's try and refresh the screen and see what happens. Okay, now the rounded corners. So yes, though it adds it in here, you may need to hit the little refresh button on the top for those to become rounded corners. Now let's test it, shall we? Let's hit Tim's main camera. 
perfect. And let's hit 4K screen and both cameras. Perfect. So the transition is working excellent. And if I need to go to websites or whatnot, I can do that through any other part of the page. I can turn up and down my volumes. There's a million features that can be used in all of this system here. Absolutely love it. And let me tell you, for $12 or $13, this is amazing. And not only that, it's also very, very consistent. Um, when they first started releasing this, uh, when I first got involved, um, the, there was a little bit of a delay time between when you would push the button and when it would jump. And now it's becoming more and more and more tighter, tighter, tighter. When the only reason I was using Stream Deck in the past, when I was still using Touch Portal, was because I needed something that would be instantaneous. And uh, it seems like they've really cut down that delay time between when you push the button and when it makes that jump. It's very, very consistent, which I love. I, I hope that gets you started. The main thing is you have to install that OBS uh, WebSocket. Once you get that in there and you, hit the, and you go and you connect, now let me show you how to set up that connect button if you want to have a connect to OBS button. I'm, I'm not sure if you're going to need it, truth be told. Uh, I don't know if it's an automatic thing. I'll have to look into that a bit more. But if you're finding you're having a hard time connecting, maybe you need to set up a button to activate your connection with OBS. So what you can do is you can make a button in general. And then what you want to do is you want to scroll down into the OBS section. And down here is one called connect with OBS. Click on that, drag it over and name your button what you choose to name it and save it, okay? And that is how to make your button to connect to OBS. And once you press that button, it creates that web socket down in the corner that we saw on the screen a little earlier, and it seamlessly connects, which is great. I don't know if it's a necessity, because if you look up here under tools, uh, it sets it up right here, web sockets server settings. Let's go ahead and open that up, and it shows the connection and the password, enable system tray alerts, enable debugging, logging, enable often authentication. The whole nine yards is all right here, so you can easily do that if you need to. But it seemed to do it automatically for me. I didn't even have to. I thought I was going to have a longer video when it, when it came to that. Not necessary. Well, listen, I hope that that helped you. That is just how to get started. I got a little stuck because I've had Touch Portal now for a while. And... It was connecting to my OBS, but it was connecting to my Streamlabs OBS. I didn't know how to set it up with Studio. And so it's just that WebSocket. Get that WebSocket and get started. You are going to love Touch Portal. You're going to love it. I use Stream Deck. I have it because of that latency that I was concerned about. But truth be told, this thing is still excellent. And if you can get a, if you can get a tablet that vibrates when you press on it, that's even better because the vibration lets you know that you actually hit the button when you press that. I love that feature. I can hear it, I can feel it when I do it, and it makes it more tactile. They've made a great upgrade by allowing it to have that vibrate mode so that when you touch onto the screen, you feel it little zzz, and you know that you've actually connected with your iPad or connected with your tablet. That's gonna do it for this video. I do hope that you've liked it. Hey, by the way, please hit that like button. If you've watched this video all the way to the end, especially hit that like button. I mentioned that in the other touch portal and I'm getting messages all throughout my uh, comment section saying, watch it all the way to the end. I love those messages because I've been known to rant on for a little while. Apparently, my subscriber counter has not been up this whole video, so let's go ahead and update it. 1,510. I want to thank you guys so much. And actually, that's a lie because I looked at my counter just before we started. That's not updating. I'm at 1,520 subs. I want to thank you guys so much. Just last night alone, we only had 1,505. So this is really growing really fast, and I'm really enjoying it. It's truly, truly awesome, and I appreciate you guys. God bless you all. I'll see you next time right here on Legacy Studio. Hey, uh, what, what's my line? What's my line, honey? Um, I forget. Don't be stupid. Don't uh, uh, be... Oh, I, what is it? What, how do you put it? If you're going to be good, if you're not going to be good, get it on camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that how you say it? Be good? No, but I use a different word. Yeah, you do. It's not be good. Keep it clean. No. Yes, I do say that. Hey, y'all, make sure to behave yourselves, and if you don't, make sure you get it on video. Just make sure to keep it clean. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time right here on Legacy Studio. Bye.